Hello, my name is Max Sullivan and I'll be presenting uh, these slides uh, based on an upcoming paper I have with my research partner Joseph Keller and our research mentor Dr. Andrew Misseldine uh, on counting Schur rings over cyclic groups of semi-prime order. So first off, what is a Schur ring? Well, uh, for some finite group G and the group algebra over G with coefficients from the field F, uh, we'll define elements from X by these sums of elements uh, in that group algebra, and we say that um, for some partition of primitive sets of the finite group G um, and a um, S, this funny symbol is an S, let S be the subspace of the group algebra spanned by these uh, uh, simple quantities, and we'll say that S is a sure ring if it fulfills these three conditions. And first, the identity is in a partition by itself. Um, we have the second condition that basically forms quasi-group inverses over the ring and um, and this third condition basically guarantees that it is closed under multiplication of these simple quantities. So um, we'll move on to a couple more definitions about Schur rings. So an S set uh, for some Schur ring S, an S set is a union of some of those primitive sets um, some of those CIs. Uh, an S subgroup is an S set that just happens to be um, also a subgroup. Um, and an S section is for two S subgroups. Um, we have the section KH uh, is an S section of the Schur ring S, this particular one, where K is um, the trivial subgroup is subgroup of K, which is a subgroup of H, which is a subgroup of G, and K is normal in G. The section is proper if K cannot be equal to the trivial subgroup, and H can't be all of G. Um, so there are a couple of types of Schur rings, so I'll identify what we call traditional Schur rings, um, uh, the first of which is called the trivial Schur ring. And in the trivial Schur ring, it only has two classes. Uh, the first one has to be one, since the identity is by itself, by definition, and then the rest is just uh, everything else in G. And so for any finite group G, there's always a trivial Schur ring. We'll see later that it's unique, and it's denoted um, with the G uh, superscript zero. Um, next, we have automorphic Schur rings. So for the automorphism group over G, um, and H, which is some subgroup of G, will partition G into these CIs according to um, what H does when it acts on G. Um, and this would be the automorphic Schur ring. We'll denote that with G with the superscript H. In the case that um, H happens to be the trivial subgroup, um, this will form the discrete Schur ring where all the elements are in their own partitions. Um, and for any abelian group, um, this G with the superscript plus minus is called the symmetric Schur ring. Basically, we pair each element with its uh, inverse. Um, so uh, that'll always be available in abelian groups, which is what we have to be dealing with as well. So next, we'll move on to direct products of Schur rings. So if we have two Schur rings, S and I, if we can partition, or not partition, if we can divide up G into this direct product of H and K, where H and K happen to be S subgroups, or S and I subgroups um, particularly, then S and I are sure rings over H and K respectively, then we can just take their direct product, and this itself will be a sure ring constructed by the following formula. And so um, next we'll talk about um, sure subrings. And so for an S for a Schur ring S over G and H, which is some S subgroup, if we intersect S with the group algebra over H, we get a, sh a Schur subring um, over that group algebra. Uh, and so, of course, if we choose the right um, H and I, we can just get all of the original Schur rings uh, if we have the right sections. Um, moving on to our final. Um, Oh, wait, one more. So sure quotient rings will be, um, so if we have a um, S be a sure ring over G and K a normal S subgroup, um, we can define just the natural um, quotient map and just have a sure ring over that quotient map. It's called the sure quotient ring. Uh, of course, with the right choice of sections, we can just get the whole, um, the whole sure ring. And then uh, we'll have one more definition, and that will be uh, wedge decomposable. So um, for assuring S, 
um, S will be wedge decomposable if we can find some proper S section uh, for every primitive set um, either C is going to be a subset of H or just a union of cosets of K basically we can decompose it into these different sections if we cannot find some proper S section of this then um, the sure ring S would be wedge in decomposable so for some wedge decomposable sure rings we have wedge product sure rings so for some sure rank that would be wedge decomposable and that proper section uh, that is attributed to it um, and S and I over um, H and G mod K respectively um, then we can form the wedge product by the following uh, function between these two things and note that the wedge product um, always has to do with a specific S section uh, and so we'll see later that this is a non-abelian operation as well and so um, counting this gets a little bit more complicated uh, later on and so that brings us to the end of our uh, types of sure rings and so we'll basically classify those sure rings as the traditional ones so a sure ring is traditional if it's either trivial automorphic a direct product sure ring or a wedge product sure ring um, and of course a theorem from Lung and Mann um, all of the sure rings are over any cyclic groups are traditional and so since we'll be dealing with cyclic groups we only need to consider these traditional sure rings when we're counting them so moving on to an example um, consider the group Z6 um, the trivial sure ring we just take one by itself and then everything else in the second partition um, the symmetric sure ring would take uh, Z1 and Z5, Z2 and Z4 and Z3 because um, they're all with their respective multiplicative inverses uh, in the group um, so for we have the wedge product sure ring Z2 wedge Z3 uh, forms this one and the direct product between these uh, two so also Z2 Z3 and then this Z2 on the final line here these are all the uh, discrete sure rings um, in this case so not just those groups but just the discrete sure rings um, of those and so we can get um, this for the wedge product sure ring and then the direct product sure ring with the uh, discrete over Z2 and the trivial over Z3 will form the direct product sure ring listed here um, move on to our main problem which is uh, actually counting them so the goal is sort of to count the number of those traditional sure rings and so using the principles of inclusion and exclusion uh, to remove any double count as well so we'll count those four types and then discount any overlap between them and so uh, basically we uh, just taking the following principle so we'll just count um, those four types and subtract any of the overlap between those types so for the number of trivial sure rings so we'll move on to actually counting the number of trivial sure rings over um, over a group of semi prime order or pretty much any group there's only going to be one and so it only adds one to our final formula and as an added bonus it's not going to overlap with any of the other types of sure rings and so we can just count one and we don't have to worry about subtracting the intersection with automorphic direct product or wedge product sure rings and so we get the following added to our general formula that we'll have at the end plus one so um, pretty nice there moving on to automorphic sure rings um, the automorphic sure rings over a semi prime group can be counted by counting the subgroups it's not um, so there's a nice um, bijection between those two sets of numbers and so we can use a nice counting argument there um, and there's a source on sort of the uh, methods of counting subgroups over groups of those orders um, we use some of those methods to arrive at our conclusions but a previous result proved by my research mentor Dr. Misselnein, um the uh, number of automorphic sure rings over the automorphism group of um, Z, P, where P is some prime to the K, will just be N, K, and N is just the number of divisors of P minus 1, or just the totient of P. Uh, and so we'll use that along with some other 
results about automorphism groups. The automorphism group of um, ZPQ can just be broken up into the direct product of the automorphism groups of ZP and ZQ since they're relatively prime. And then those automorphism groups, since P and Q are prime, will just be isomorphic to ZP minus 1 and ZQ minus 1 respectively. So we'll go ahead and use these to develop our counting argument it has to do with uh, how many subgroups are going to be given over those. So, so it's going to deal a lot with the common factors of P minus 1 and Q minus 1. So we started out by dealing with some specific cases, um, like uh, safe primes and Fermat primes, but now we've gotten to a point where we got a general formula for these, and it looks uh, something like this. And so where we can count sort of the um, number of where we can actually count with the totient function and uh, these uh, finite sets the uh, the actual number of automorphic sure rings over that group. And so this will be added into our final formula. And so this will be one piece of it, specifically the automorphism piece, and then we'll have a piece for each of the different kinds. And so moving on to the direct product ones, it's actually very nice because we have a result that any direct product S ring will be automorphic if and only if it's a product of automorphic Schur rings. Um, and we actually get that every direct product Schur ring is going to be an automorphic Schur ring. Since the product will have to combine each of the S subgroups of each S ring, and since the right S subgroups will be in the right places, each of them will be um, automorphic, so we actually don't have to, we don't have a separate formula. We've already counted the number of automorphic ones. Uh, the direct product Schur rings will be a proper subset of the automorphic Schur rings. And so we get that uh, we don't actually have to add anything else to our formula. We've already counted um, three of the four types. And so moving on to the final, possibly most complicated type, but you wouldn't know it looking at the formula. The wedge product Schur rings, um, all of them will be of some form where it's a Schur ring, uh, this funny Z, we're denoting a Schur ring over those groups. Um, so a Schur ring over ZP and a Schur ring over ZQ, um, or ZQ wedge ZP, because this is a non abelian operation and depends on the sections. Um, so the sections actually don't um, factor into these groups. Uh, and so we don't have to denote it on the bottom here. It's a little bit um, easier when they're both prime. Um, we have just sort of a uh, more specific wedge product. But anyway, so the, uh, yeah, the number will actually just be the number of these and the number of these, where we have just sort of the, um, where we just count the number of sure rings over ZP is ZQ. Um, and that's actually a much easier operation. So we get a little recursive with it, but in the end we get this following formula. We get the number of wedge product sure rings will just be two times basically the number of sure rings over ZP and and times the number of sure rings over ZQ. So arriving at our general result, uh, oh well we have to count the overlap first, so with the overlap with the automorphic sure rings we actually don't get any because any wedge product sure ring um, of the form ZP wedge ZQ will contain all the S subgroups of ZP but not the right S subgroups of ZQ. Uh, and so it will not able be able to be automorphic since an automorphic one will contain both the S subgroups over ZP and ZQ. Um, and so so none of the wedge product sure rings over a semi-prime group could be uh, automorphic. And so those three pieces of the puzzle are all that we need to complete our general formula. Uh, so we've counted all four, and we get uh, the number of Schur rings. So for P and Q primes, um, this omega PQ's number of Schur rings over uh, no the number of Schur rings over the group ZPQ, where this was the automorphic part uh, plus the wedge product part, and plus one for the trivial Schur ring. So, and then phi, of course, is the totient function. It just counts the number of um, integers relatively prime to p. So, um, that's it. So that's our main result. Some further work that we did. So this was um, just sort of counting all of them from that main theorem and verifying with a computer. 
um, all of the um, sure rings over semi prime groups up to 100. And so these are all of the um, all of the semi prime groups up to 100 in this nice table. So that's pretty nice. So another result that we have this is actually um, there's a separate presentation um, over about the um, sure rigs over uh, the 4P groups and so uh, that my research partner Joseph Keller um, should have presented um, it'll probably be um, not too hard to find if you found this one so uh, for any prime of the form 2 to the K A plus 1 so some prime where it's um, 4 times some prime um, we get the following formula for the number of sure rings over that so a little bit more um, a little bit more neat right there so it's kind of a nice um, kind of a nice symbol right there there's there's a little bit more cumbersome notation in the paper but I decided to omit it uh, but yeah so this is a nice nice type formula there's as I said a separate presentation on that so some further questions we had when we were working through this project so what about groups over p squared q so if pq we figured out then why don't we try another uh, progression of that so still working with primes but um, p squared since the automorphism group of p to the k was already figured out so for any k that would be easy but what if we added another q on there um, all about 2pq so uh, we have sort of the um, you know just three primes but with the specific prime two since it'll make it a little bit easier to deal with it first and sort of figuring out how to make a computer program work for higher numbers so that we can verify um, larger values of PQ and 4P and those sort of things with a computer program just to um, further corroborate our results so far. Um, here's some of the things that I cited. Obviously there's quite a lot of uh, secondary reading material that went into this presentation. Uh, they'll all be sort of cited in the upcoming paper, um, but these are the ones I directly referenced in this presentation. Uh, so um, yeah, and that would be the end of our presentation. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I think we'll be putting this up on YouTube, so welcome to comment on it, um, and thank you very much.